let me see what you've got. Hey, what's up, guys? Wire93 here, and here is yet another video. Well, kind of ish. <laughs> well, this is kind of like a video to transition into per se of the new phase of this channel per se. So, if you saw my video yesterday or today, whichever this posted, I cannot remember now. I think it was yesterday. I was talking about bringing in other animes onto this channel, and I mentioned two other animes that I'm currently watching. Well, I kind of wanted to talk about that and other animes I've watched and I found really good as well. You know, this kind of helped transition into this new phase. So, the other animes, some animes I will exclude out of this list are animes that I do not, or anime, anime, whatever the plural is, that I do not remember too well or I only saw as a child. So, I do not want to mention those if I do not remember if that, they were that good because I can barely remember them to even explain the plot or, of course, nostalgia reasons. To in the first place. So this list it will be in no particular order, but I'm numbering them, you know, just to organize them. Just to organize them. Alright, number one, the Selector We Cross series. So this anime really has some parts to it. So it has two parts to be exact. It's all one storyline, but they have two different names for little parts of it. So the first season being called Selector Infected We Cross and the second being called Selector Spread We Cross. Selector Infected We Cross is about a girl named Ruko and just moved to Tokyo, Japan along with her grandmother and her brother. You learn that she doesn't have any friends and she is really content with that for some reason and her grandmother gets worried. So her brother wants to help with that, <laughs> gets Ruko some cards from a game called Wee Cross, which is becoming a huge trend for the girls. I'm not sure why, but not why not for the guys, but for the girls. When Ruko opens up the card, she finds out one of hers can talk. She realizes that the other girls also have this card. But there are only a select few of them, hence the name Selector. Later in that we find out if a girl wins a certain number of times, they can have their wish come true. If they lose three times, then the opposite happens. The fun of watching this is how you see how the story plays out and how the truth about this game is way deeper than what you find out later in the line that leads off into a sequel, Selector Spread We Cross. Saying anything on that, this is that's all spoiler territory, but just know that this part of the series has a more grittier tone to it because of all the events that have happened in Selector Infected We Cross. That's a thing to say. Two. Death Parade. This series is a series that will play on your mind and how you think on life, making sure that you do not take life for granted. At least it had that impact on me when I first watched it. Really, it's like a 12 episode series, if I remember right, that really gets deeper and deeper as you go in. It sounds short, but those episodes are very well paced. The series is originally based off an OVA called Death Billiards. Basically, so how this works is that two people die, when two people die at the same time, they have a chance to play against one another and decide who goes to heaven and goes to hell. But these games sound just like simple games, but they have a dark twist to them, such as darts that are connected to parts of the body. So this really shows how much a person, how much a person is willing to hurt others in chance for salvation. This series is really good at storytelling, as when you go deeper into the story, these reoccurring characters will grow more and more on you, and you, when the climax comes, oh man, it gets deep. Number three, Akame Ga Kill. This is an adaption from the manga, so I, it does have an, a source material. I'm watching this one dub, so of course I may have somewhat of excused opinion, as I'm not aware of any dubisms as of now, because I have not read the original manga or watched the Japanese version of the anime. So my knowledge of the series is what is only shown on Toonami on Saturdays, just so you all know. So to sum up the series, there is a corrupted there's a corrupted empire that's treating its people basically like crap. They're, they're basically like crap, per se. And a guy named Tatsumi is trying to protect his village, so he works for the Empire at first, so when a group of assassins called Night Raid attacks when he's on duty, they kinda they get their way, of course, they're way better than him at fighting, and they kind of force Tatsumi into recruitment. And at first, you know, he's kind of resentful of joining, but he opens up his eyes 
how it really is and makes a bond with this group and as you will as well. We also find out there's also these special weapons called Imperial Arms that are pretty powerful weapons that can form, that can only bond with a select person or selected people. Weapons such as Akame Swords, which poisons people with one cut. So one hit and they're down. And then there's a bunch of different varieties. It's not like all one hit, one kill, stuff like that, but it's like all of them have their own strengths. The main story that goes on here is that they obviously want to overthrow the Empire. But along the way, you will see other kind of subplots start to develop, even when characters that are on the Empire side. They, like, as you go through, at first, the characters that they're going after are really, really bad people. Well, and then, for the more recent ones that I'm watching now, they're kind of just misinformed people. Like, you will see them bond with their own group, and then you will see them just misinformed. They think they're re fighting for the right thing, but they're really not. I'm per I personally am really loving this series as I watch it every week. If they come out with the home release, you already know I'm going to be on top of that. Number four, Kill a Kill. This is going to be pretty short, so don't worry about that. This was a series that kind of starts off with an, an out there premise, you know? Just because the art style is simple and the animation is super, super flashy. But the basic plot summary is that there's this girl named Ryuko Matoi and is in search of their father's killer. And she has a special outfit called a Goku uniform. No, the Goku uniform is not in reference to Dragon Ball at all, at least that I know of. I don't think it is. So don't say anything. That basically grants her special abilities. Other people have these outfits as well, and then the story kind of goes off, and then with Sasuke, Sasuke, I can never pronounce her name right every time I try, and then her mother comes into it, and all that good jazz. All of it's pretty out there, but it's a pretty simple series, and I shouldn't explain too much of the plot, because one of the cons I found out about this show, I know I didn't explain any cons about the other show, but this one it has to be said that the story kind of feels repetitive until the main arc comes in and when you feel like this story and that's when you feel like the story is making some progress so once you do get that and get past everything you really start to see the seriousness of the story you really are watching for most of that number five parasite the maxim <clears throat> so this is a series from what i hear is a manga adaption from with just updated aesthetics which has mixed feelings around the community, some arguing that it should keep to its roots and others suggesting that to keep the stuff it's made for this generation. While writing this, I was trying to check the date of the manga and end up writing, not, not writing, reading the first chapter. And I, as I, I read it, I like the art style, I just like the new ones better. I don't know, I'm one of those people who like change. Sometimes I don't, but most sometimes I do. But the manga itself was made in 1988 and to 1995, while the anime was originally made in 2014 and 2015. Again, this is a series I only know from what is shown on Toonami, so it's still ongoing as we speak. So basically, the premise here is that the, a guy named Shinichi Izumi, what, <clears throat> one night a worm-like thing, parasite thing, tries to control his brain by entering through his ear, but fails to do so as he's wearing earphones. Whoa, such a twist. So ends up going to his arm instead. After he, su after he, su he successfully prevents the parasite from taking invasion of his brain, the thing instead took over his arm. So we, they soon learn to work with one another as they are the same body, and Shinichi wants to pretty soon wants to end up killing other parasites that are out there and murdering people with the help of the parasite that he later named Migi, which is right, because it took over his right arm. Okay, so what I like about this series is that you basically get two perceptions on life. There's the emotional toll that Shinichi has that every human is sacred, I'm not sure why I said that, that every human is sacred. Then there's Migi, who's pretty much only there to protect himself. He doesn't feel any sympathy, he feels no feelings toward other people. But 
I'm really liking the way this series is headed. I mean, I lose a half hour of sleep every night just because it comes on so late and I'm interested in it. Those have been some other animes I personally liked. I just kind of help you guys transfer into this guy new face of my channel, and of course, those are going to be the main animes I'll be talking about. If I get interested in another anime, so of course I'll be talking about them on this channel. But those are the ones I will be talking about. So, have you liked any of these animes? Have you seen any of these? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. It certainly helps me out much, much. And make sure you subscribe for more Dragon Ball and anime. I, don't, I need an outro. Anime content such as this. I will see you all in the next video.